Hi guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 22, Our Controlled Vowels with OR. Please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your blue book open to page 137. You will also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. If at any point I'm moving too fast, please pause the video and catch up. All right, so last week we started our conversation about our controlled vowels. We reminded ourselves that AR says R in a stressed syllable. Now you already knew that in words like car and star and hard. So this past week, we looked at those R sounds as they appeared at the beginning of a two syllable word in words like harbor or garden. And we noticed that that AR keeps its sound. It says R as long as it's in the stressed syllable. So this week we're gonna see what happens to the OR sound. We know that in one syllable words like for or form or chord, OR says or. So we're gonna see if that same rule applies. If the OR says or in a stressed syllable, and we're gonna notice what happens to that sound in an unstressed syllable. But first let's read our words. Okay, you'll notice I've already gone ahead and used a brown vertical line to mark off my syllables and an orange check mark to identify the stressed syllable. Remember, that's the part we say a little bit louder and a little stronger. So if you need to pause the video to draw your lines and check marks, feel free to do that now. All right, so let's go. Repeat after me. Absorb, afford, Coral, correct, dormant, forest, forfeit, formal, moral, normal, organ, portrait, resource, snorkel, support. Did you hear that or sound over and over? Great. So let's choose a color. And what we're going to do first is we're going to find that O-R um, in our words and we're gonna notice if it's in the stressed syllable or not. So in the word absorb, we hear or right there. In afford, we also hear that or in our stressed syllable. Now our next word, the first syllable is stressed, coral. And there's that or sound again. I want to skip number four. We'll come back to it. Dormant, forest, forfeit, formal. They all have that nice crisp or sound at the beginning. Same thing with moral, normal, organ, portrait. Skip number 13 snorkel, and then look at our last word, support. The OR is back at the end, but because it's stressed, it's making that OR sound. So over here, blue box equals OR in the stressed syllable. Now, what happens to OR if it's in the unstressed syllable? Well, look at the word correct. Here's an OR, but we don't pronounce that correct. We don't say, Mom, I got the correct answer. We say correct. Do you notice how that OR turns into a schwa, it becomes an uh sound? We also notice when OR shows up at the end of a word, like um, author or actor, it loses its or sound and becomes more of an er, okay? So it turns out that when or shows up in an unstressed syllable, it's either gonna make an uh sound or an er sound. So 
over here, purple equals OR in an unstressed syllable. And because it's not stressed, it's not going to make its crisp OR sound. So in this case, in correct, it's going to sound like a schwa, an uh. Okay? Now, look at number 13. This time we have O-U-R. O-U-R, all three letters are making the OR sound. Now, this should not be new to you because you know that this spells your and this spells pour, like I'm going to pour a glass of water. You know the word tor and the number four, right? And you've also seen this pattern in words like court and course, okay? So now you're seeing it in a word that's a little bit bigger, resource. Nothing happens to that O-U-R. It keeps its or sound, okay? So just keep that in mind. The O-U-R says or, okay? All right, um, so for most of our words, it's going to be really easy to um, spell and pronounce that or chunk. We just have to watch out for the O-U-R in resource. The trickiest part of our spelling list is going to be the schwa that shows up in the unstressed syllable. And remember, it's tricky because any vowel and many different vowel teams can make that a uh sound. So there it is in absorb, afford, coral, correct, dormant, Forest. So, so far we've had an A, an O, and an E all making that same a uh, sound. Four foot. Ooh, this time we have E and I. I don't think we've seen that before. Forfeit, right? If you forfeit your game, it means you have to cancel it, um, but you have to let the other team win. So, for instance, if your soccer team is supposed to play another soccer team, but half your team comes down with the stomach bug and can't play, you either have to reschedule, play another time, or just forfeit. Just say, we can't play, you win, okay? So to forfeit is to cancel a game and let the other team win. Formal, moral, normal, right? We talked about the AL pattern a few weeks ago. So here it is again, quite quite popular. Organ. Check this out. Portrait has an A and an I working together to make that a uh sound. Snorkel and support. So everything that I circled in green is going to make a schwa sound. Okay. All right. So let's quickly go through our list and make sure we know what our words mean and we will jot down the parts of speech as we go. Okay. So first let's look for verbs. Okay. We start with absorb. Think of a sponge. A sponge is designed to absorb water. It soaks it in. If your skin is really dry and you put some lotion on, it's going to absorb it right away. It's going to soak it in. If you can afford something, it means you have enough money. Okay? You have enough. Like, um, if you can't afford something, it means you don't have enough money. Now, afford doesn't just have to talk about money. I could say... Um, you know, I can't afford to take any more sick days because I already took three. Or I can afford to take Friday off because I haven't used any personal days. So if you can afford something, whether it's vacation time or um, an expense, it means you have enough. A coral is a tiny sea creature. That is a 
noun, right? If you think about a coral reef in a hot tropical place under the water, that coral reef was built by all these little tiny sea creatures called coral. Um, the word correct can be used as a verb, like your teacher will correct your paper, but it can also be used as an adjective, a describing word, like I hope I got the correct or right answer. Dormant is also an adjective. Um, if something's dormant, it's not active now. It's just lying there waiting. Like think about a volcano. Maybe it erupted a hundred years ago, but nothing has happened since then. It's lying dormant, okay? It could still erupt any day now. Sometimes people have viruses that are illnesses that live in their body and they're dormant, which means for most of the time they don't act up and then suddenly it pops up again, right? Okay, a forest is a noun. It's a, a, another word for the woods, right? A group of trees. Um, to forfeit, we talked about that. That means you give up the game, right? So that's a verb. Formal is an adjective. It's the opposite of casual, right? So if you're going to a wedding and you need to dress formally, you're going to wear a nice dress or a nice suit because it's a formal occasion. It's serious. It's important. Okay, so for formal, I'm just going to write serious and important. Moral could be a noun if we're talking about a fable, every fable like the um, the lion and the mouse, uh, the tortoise and the hare, it's going to end with a moral, which is a, fa um, a message, right? Um, but it can also be a describing word, right? Because in our lives, we have to make moral decisions, right? We find $20 lying on the floor and we have to decide, should I keep that? or should I try to find the owner, right? What would be the moral choice? So um, whenever we talk about morals, we're talking about um, anything that has to do with being a good person, okay? Having sound morals. Uh, normal is also an adjective. Normal would be the usual, right? So maybe you've been sick for a few days and you've been spiking a fever, but now your temperature's back to normal. It's back where it should be, okay? Maybe on a normal day, you eat a bowl of cereal, but today it's a special occasion, so you're making pancakes. So the normal would be the usual. An organ is a noun. There's different kinds. An organ can be kind of like a piano, um, an instrument that's played like in a church, right? There's a lot of organ music, but an organ can also be a body part. Your heart is an organ, your brain is an organ, okay? A portrait is a noun. A portrait is a picture. So maybe your parents want to get a family portrait. So you're all going to put your nice clothes on. You're going to go to a studio and you're going to pay a photographer to take a nice picture of you all. Okay. Sometimes instead of having their portrait taken with a camera, people want to have a portrait painted, right? So an artist paints um, all the family members. So a portrait is a picture. A resource is also a thing, right? A resource is something that can help you. So for instance, if you don't know when uh, garbage is going to be collected in your town, maybe there's a holiday on Monday and you don't know if garbage is going to be collected or not, you can go to your town's website that is a great resource. It's got lots of information that will help you. If you're getting bullied at school or you're having a problem at school, um, you need to find out what are your resources? What person can you go to to get help and what can they 
give you to help. Those would be resources. Uh, snorkel can be a verb, right? Because when you snorkel, you swim around underwater, but you use goggles and a snorkel um, mask, right? With a little tube that will get you fresh air above the water. You might have flippers on and you just kind of swim around under the surface of the water to look at the coral or the fish or other things. So you can snorkel. I'm just gonna say snorkel equals swim underwater. You can also have a snorkel. That's what we call that little um, tube that you breathe out of, okay? And then support can be a verb. If you support your friends, you take care of them, that's a verb, um, but it can also be a noun, right? So during difficult times, we count on our friends for support. So support is another word for help, okay? Lots of great vocabulary this week. If you don't know what some of these words mean already, I urge you to learn them and start using them, right? The best way to learn vocabulary is to practice it. The last thing I wanna talk about before we go is our new root. So if you open to page 140, we have a new root which is form. Form comes from Latin and it means shape. Okay, so if you don't like the way things are run in your town, you can try to reform them. You can try to reshape them, right? You don't like that your public library is closed every Saturday. You don't like that they only let you check out two books. So you can try to reform the library's policies, reshape them, right? Another word you've seen is deformed, right? Uh, if somebody is injured in a fire, they're, you know, and they have burns, their face might be deformed, right? The shape of their face has changed and they need to get that fixed. Um, this week we have formal, and there's form right there. So if you think about a formal occasion, it's serious, it's important. There's a certain shape, a certain box that we have to fit in, right? We're supposed to dress a certain way. We're supposed to act a certain way uh, to fit that mold or shape, right? If we're having a formal wedding, we don't want people showing up in t-shirts and shorts, okay? Um, that would be too casual. So when you get here, you're gonna find a whole bunch of words that contain that form root, and then you're gonna use what you know about prefixes and suffixes to match each of these words with their definition below. All right, that's all I have for you today. Good luck, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.